you've read this in the readings, and this, might, uh, this is something that we might encounter in the T group side, uh, the, the notion of the net and interpersonal feedback. So when we have interactions with others, and uh, we communicate with others, we typically have certain intentions. You know, I have a, a maybe I want to, let's say like it's the first day of the class, I'm entering the T group, I feel a little bit insecure about being accepted by others, and I want to make connections with others, and my way of making connections with others is to make compliments. Right? So I might say, hey, you know, I love your sweater, you know, it's great, you know, hey, you know, like, love your headband, you know, really cool color, you know. I might be going around making compliments, right? My intention is to make a bond, you know, to be, and maybe there's something I really appreciate about people, right? Uh, so that's my, my intentions are to make that connection, to give them a, 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 a positive uh, compliment. Now, the way this is interpreted by others might not be in accord with my intentions. It might be like, Who's this fake guy who's like complimenting everybody else, you know, and, you know, like, you know, bullshitting his way through friendship, you know? <laughs> that could be a reaction, you know? A reaction could be like, I don't like that sweater, so I, why, why could he like it? You know, he's lying, or uh, I'm insecure about myself, so how, you know, if you, if you don't like certain things about yourself and other people compliment you about it, you might not take the compliment, not believe it, right? Uh, or you can, uh, you know, you could take it in and say, believe that, right? Uh, but there, there could be a variety of other answers. You could be like, what is he after? Is he, you know, is he trying to hit on me? You know, is, he, you know, is he trying to strategically you know, uh, establish rapport with me so that he can take advantage of me in some way later? You know? So uh, that's kind of the reaction. So we have uh, a behavior which is you know, inspired by our needs, our motivations, our intentions the way we've interpreted the situation. Uh, we communicate it through various ways, in verbal ways, non-verbal ways, omissions, right? Those are, uh, there's an impact of our behavior that uh, other people receive, and they respond with their own needs, their own story, their in own inner monologue. And the part that where, where you know, crossing the net becomes a problem is when we make assumptions about other people's intentions and needs or when we make assumptions about how other people, the impact of our own behavior. So if, I, if I'm convinced that I'm being just Mr. Nice Guy, I'm a nice guy, I like to compliment people, what's wrong about that? Right? That's my belief. You know? and I never inquire about, did you, you know, how did you perceive me complimenting you? What was the impact of my behavior? If I never investigate that, I might be missing a whole part of reality. I might be rubbing a lot of people the wrong way without realizing it. In the, in the, the reading, my, uh, the week at Inverness, you remember the Marlboro Man story, right, example? So you have this, uh, the, main, the, the main protagonist is rubbed the wrong way by this guy who's, up, you know, who's behaving in a confident, manly, matter. You know, he's taking initiative, he's trying to get some things going, and this guy's like, oh, who's this guy? Like, arrogant, you know, marble man, you know, like, because, you know, the, the narrator is, in fact, you know, a little bit jealous, would like to be that confident, but doesn't like that, and so he's rubbed the wrong way. Now, the marble man might never know that, would never have any idea that his behavior provokes that kind of reaction from others, unless he received feedback on that. So, it's really hard to do to, to not cross the net or to inquire about the parts that are not our expertise. So that's where, again, like our subjective filters become a problem when we, uh, when in interaction with others, we jump in the field of another person's expertise and believe we're correct. Uh, so, if I meet the Marlboro man and I say, you are an arrogant person, I know, you know, you're a power-hungry, power-taking, arrogant person, and I make a judgment about his character based on my story, 
that's me jumping into his intention, his character, in a way that's probably incorrect. And he's certainly probably going to rub it the wrong way. Now, if I tell the Marlboro man, you know, like when you first, the first day when you came into the room and you started inviting everybody else to introduce themselves, you know, and, you know, pushed for people to continue to introduce themselves and, you know, took control of the situation. I, you know, I didn't like that. That's the, me saying, here's the impact of your behavior. Yet there's a behavior that we both witnessed, and I'm trying to be very specific about what that behavior was. I'm not making any assumption about what you were trying to do. I'm just telling you how it impacted me. Now, that leads me to conclude that this guy is inconsiderate, you know, Marlboro man, you know, sort of like manly man who's you know, pushing others around, you know. Uh, that's my assumption. But here I'm not saying that. I'm, not, I'm, I'm holding off on the uh, ladder of inference. I'm trying to stick as much as I can with what actually happened, the observable behavior. And then I'm sharing the, the impact that that behavior had on me. That's uncontestable, by the way. If you tell somebody, when you did that, I didn't like it, or I felt that, if somebody else knows you didn't feel that, that's not their domain of expertise. Nobody can tell you whether your feelings are valid or not. People might not believe you. People might think you're lying. But they can't tell you that you didn't feel that. Uh, so your feelings are always valid. What you might be wrong about assumptions you may have about others. I might be wrong about the Marlboro man is, is uh, you know, power hungry or, you know, you know, he man or however they call it, like a macho guy, you know, he's walking on other people's toes. Uh, that's an assumption. I might be wrong about that. But I'm not wrong about the behavior that he engages in rubbed me the wrong way. I didn't like it. Uh, that one, that I'm correct. I'm just, you know, it's uncontestable. Now, different people have very different reactions to the same behavior. Some people may say, oh, I'm glad, I'm glad somebody's taking the initiative. I'm glad somebody is like, I was feeling, I didn't know, you know, I, I didn't want to be the one running the show. Somebody took the spot. That made me feel comfortable. I like that. You know. Uh, so different, this different people have very different reactions. Um, I'd like you to uh, consider this. So, you know, in the T groups, in the uh, uh, experimental part of the class, you know, the, one of the goals is to take risks. Part of taking risks means giving people feedback, honest feedback, direct feedback. Right? Now, I've noticed it's normal. The first day, everybody's nice to each other. Everybody wants to say, no, you were great. You know, like, that was perfect. You know, you, you, you know, I liked everything you did. I like everything about you, right? Uh, we all want to be liked. We, no, none of us want to hear, you know, it's always a little painful to hear negative feedback. Uh, and, you know, at first, we don't take too many risks of, you know, we try not to rub people the wrong way. So we hold back on our natural tendencies. As we get more and more comfortable, our natural self tends to express itself. Uh, consider this. Would you, be, would you like to hear feedback about how you come off to others? Some of you have had this as uh, goals, learning goals, learning how they come off to other people. There's been different ways of expressing that, like what's, what is my first impression? So that we all have data on what our first impressions are of everybody else. Right? But then as we progress in the quarter, it, will, it won't be first impressions anymore. It will be you know, impressions with more data. Uh, do you want to hear, most of us are, you know, I found that most of us would like to hear honest feedback, but we're afraid of giving it to others. Is that true or not? How many of you are, would like to hear feedback? It's just, you know, from others. You, you know, okay. How many of you are a little uncertain about, would like to, would like to hear feedback nicely? Yeah. <laughs> I feel you're a little bit afraid of saying that too. Uh, I hear some half hands. You know. uh, how many of you feel very comfortable giving other people feedback that could potentially hurt their feelings? Nobody, right? Uh, you okay with that? Okay. Uh, so there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a little bit of a challenge, right? Uh, <laughs> we're going to have to, we, we're gonna have to if, if this is going to work, we're going to have to be willing to tell people how they have impacted us. Now, how many of you have trouble giving positive feedback, complimenting others. Yeah, that can be difficult too, right? Uh, to admit to saying like, I really liked what you did for me here. 
you really made me feel good, you know. Or really enjoyed, you know, your presence, your presence is very calming to me. It makes me feel very grounding. I really enjoy, you know, being in your presence. That could be, it's so, it can be so intimate to give that, that kind of feedback to others. But I think uh, if we can learn, if, if we can experiment that way, given that normally we tend to not receive or give that kind of feedback to people around us, even the closest people to us, uh, can we, in the spirit of the experiment for these five weeks, you know, four weeks left uh, of summer during the tea group, can we push the envelope a little bit and learn something really about ourselves? Now, when you get feedback from others about stuff that maybe nobody else gives you feedback about, about how you impact them, there's so much learning that can happen. You can also correct ways that you have that rub people the wrong way. The wrong way. Sometimes we tend to do certain things that annoy everybody, but nobody tells us. Or maybe people tell us in such sugar-coated way that we don't really get it. Now think about it. Like think about your roommates, your family members, your friends. Like, the, the, you know, the closer we are to somebody, the more likely we are to tell them how they really impact us. The more we trust somebody, the more we're likely to tell them, right? The less we know somebody, the less we trust them, you know. Are you, are you laughing because it's, is that true or is it not true? Oh, yeah. I, I yeah. Yeah. So, okay, so uh, jumping over the net is a problem. So not jumping over the net is a practice. Now... Again, my whole point in this class is we want to be very gentle with ourselves. I, you know, I've taught this material for like, what is it, like 11 years, you know, 11 years I've done this every quarter. And I still make mistakes all of the time. You, know? you can ask my wife and she will tell you, oh yeah, he jumps over the net all of the time. You know? uh, he's not very good at active listening. You know? He makes assumptions. You know? I do that all of the time. So I... I'm, I'm bad at this. I mean, I'm bad at this. I'm, I'm not great at this. You know? So I don't expect you to be great at this at all. I expect you to jump over the net. Uh, in fact, m you know, my disposition for learning is we have to make mistakes. I hope you make a lot of mistakes in this class. Uh, in fact, I, I, just, I know you will make a lot of mistakes, and that's okay. I'm totally okay with that. I don't expect you to be... If you were not making mistakes, then you wouldn't need the class. And, uh, you know, you wouldn't learn if you were not making mistakes. So you will jump over the net. And the key thing is not to not jump over the net, but to notice when you are. <laughs> and, to, and to be open to other people telling you, oh, I think you're jumping over the net here. Yeah. And to go, like, oh, yeah, I've done that. And to maybe laugh about it or feel bad about it and say, okay, well, yeah, uh, you know, I did that. But then to take a note and say, okay, I did that. You know. and, and the practice of noticing is what's, where learning occurs, where change occurs. So again, you can't stop yourself from judging. You can't stop yourself from stereotyping. You can't stop yourself from uh, having self-fulfilling prophecies. You can't stop yourself from having the, you know, walking through the ladder of inference. You can't stop yourself from jumping over the net. But you can notice. You can notice all of those things. With awareness is key for me. What my hope in this class is to raise awareness, to have a practice of noticing. And that's really hard. That's, that's, where they, that's the really hard part. The, the developing the discipline of noticing. Uh, it's kind of like meditation. I, I, I sometimes practice meditation, but in meditation what you do is uh, traditional meditation, you sit, you close your eyes, you know, you maybe cross your legs, and, and you try to let your awareness float and notice, register in the film of, the film of your consciousness, or the screen of your consciousness, your thoughts. What thoughts, thoughts tend to emerge? Your sensation in your body. What sensations are emerging? Your emotions. Maybe external noises or sensations, you know, maybe the wind, the smell, you know, a noise. If you have your eyes closed, there's no image there. But you might have me memories come up. Uh, and you try to remain equanimous. So you try to not follow the, a thought down the rabbit hole <laughs> or an emotion down the rabbit hole. So you tend to try to notice it and let it go. You have a sensation like you've started to eat somewhere. 
you're starting to hurt somewhere, you try not to scratch the edge or adjust your position to eliminate the hurt. You try to just notice it and let it be. But that's the hard part. The discipline of maintaining equanimous awareness without taking action. Right? That's the kind of thing that I'm asking you to do in the T groups. And in, yeah, that's part of what is involved in being in the here and now. I know a lot of you have questions about what does it mean to be in the here and now? Uh, you know, most of us tend to be identified with our thoughts. We tend to think that my awareness and my thoughts are the same thing. My identity is my thoughts, you know. And I'm proposing, no, you're not your thoughts. You have thoughts. You have sensations. You have feelings. But you are not those things. You are more than that. You have an integrated being that has thoughts, feelings, and emotions, and all, maybe other stuff, right? Can you notice those things? If you develop the discipline of noticing without taking action, which is frustrating, now, that was part of the exercise of listening to somebody talk and not responding, right? Uh, it's frustrating because you want to respond. Now, can you notice your desire to respond and not respond? And say, ah, I really want to respond now, not respond, right? Uh, you know, it's the same thing as when you have a strong feeling, you notice the feeling, and you don't follow with the feeling. You're like, oh, I'm really angry right now. Your anger wants you to do something. Your anger wants you to say something. Know, may, or maybe turn away. You know, some of us, we don't like to confront others. So if I get really angry, I turn away. I'm like, I can't deal with this, you know. Uh, so can you not do that? Can you stay there and say, I'm really angry, I'm going to stay there and notice what's happening, right? That's the kind of like, awareness uh, that we're talking about. That When you get defensive, you stay there. You're like, I'm really defensive right now. I'm noticing that. I'm not trying to you know, do the ostrich policy and, f and flee from it. I'm going to look at it, stare at it in the eyes, right? Uh, immense growth can happen from that. Immense growth can happen from that. The growth in the subjective knowledge that you have of your filters and of others, if, you know, if you can practice that kind of awareness, that's really like all of the concepts in the readings, you know, are fluff compared to your own awareness, your own capacity to notice what's happening in yourself. The, the rest, the, the class, I, I see the class as a scaffolding for you to develop and nurture that kind of awareness. And the readings guide you a little bit to understand it. Th do I make sense? Or is this weird? Or that, does it somewhat make sense what I'm talking about? Okay. Um, if you really want to benefit from this class, and also as a fun experiment for the five weeks, you know, four weeks again left, if you can, outside of the class, practice noticing. Like if you want to, uh, you know, the tea groups are just two hours, you know, in twice a week. If outside of that you can develop the discipline of saying, I'm going to try to notice my thoughts, my sensations, my feelings, when I get defensive, the ladder of inf inference and all that, that will be of great value. You can write about this in your journals. So the journals are meant to, to for you to reflect on the T groups, but also what happens outside of class that might be related. 